My son was ready to list every iPhone ever made in the talent show until I realized I had to save him from himself. Now, he's mixing beats and finally connecting with the kids who once ignored him. Despite all this, we keep trying. He is on the spectrum and loves talking about space and Apple. I am slowly teaching him social skills, but it takes a lot of face plannings for anything to stick. He absolutely drives us crazy by talking about Apple products over and over and over and over. One time he talked so much about Apple while I was driving that I zoned out to the point where I ran over a cone. Last night he hit me with the old I entered the talent show. I truly did not expect him to proceed with I'm going to recite every iPhone ever made. Usually I try my best not to hurt hurt feelings but I simply cannot sit on the sidelines and watch my child commit social suicide. I gave an absolute no and reminded him all he talks about is Apple and that his classmates do not want to sit there and listen to him talk about iPhones again. He bawled in my arms and said he had no talent. I let him cry it out. Then, we looked online at different talent show ideas. He didn't like anything he saw. Then, a light bulb went off. This kid loves sound. He likes loud annoying sounds that make me want to scratch my noise sensitive ears out. So I downloaded him a DJ app and title. We found six songs that carried a lot of the weight. Then he began mixing. He was awesome. I couldn't believe how easily he took to it. By the end of the night, he was able to echo out songs and do all of these cool siren sounds while waiting for the beat to drop. He even came up with fading out the last song and setting a vibrating alarm on his watch six minutes in order not to lose track of time. We agreed that as soon as the alarm goes off, if he isn't done, he will move on to the last song and fade it out quickly. We packed him a cool little outfit to wear with mirrored sunglasses, his iPad and speaker. Then off he went to school. I have been praying all morning, his teacher was really excited for him and I hope he doesn't back out. Even if he does, I am hoping he will stick with this hobby and maybe enter in the next talent show. Comment, it went really great. Better than I expected, honestly. The kids got up and danced, and his teacher said this is a moment she will always remember. She told us she wasn't supposed to say this, but he was the best out of all the kids. When he walked out of the door, he was beaming like a light. I think it's the first time he's ever felt connected with the kids. Now to the next story, story two. Am I the asshole for breaking up with my unmotivated girlfriend who has nothing going for her and might become homeless? I male 24 met a girl female 22 in a community college class when I was 20. We came from very different backgrounds. I was middle class trying to find a cheaper way to go to college. She was living in almost poverty going to school because she was forced to buy her parents who were threatening to kick her out. She dropped out about a year into her schooling while I continued and finished. During her first year, we formed a relationship and she moved into my apartment more or less. Her relationship with her parents is pretty much non-existent and she has little to no outside friends besides one or two women she knew from high school, who are deadbeats in my opinion. I make around 80000 a year, so we live relatively comfortably, but there's still some strain on finances. I can't say exactly when I started losing feelings, but the fact that she refuses to work, will not cook and wants to eat out every day, does not want to go to school, and continuously wants to buy and spend money on clothes and other stuff just slowly started grading me more and more. I work in a female-dominated workplace, and seeing, having conversations, and interacting with co-workers who have so much going for them, have fun hobbies, and aspirations makes it all the more worse when your girlfriend is chronically online and spends seven hours a day scrolling through Instagram or TikTok. Rel thinks having sex is all she needs to do on her end. Our relationship isn't bad, we have fights every now and then like an average couple have an active sex life, but that's pretty much it. From her perspective, if I broke up with her it would be out of nowhere but I'm pretty much done, and now I could move on quickly and have nothing to be regretful about as shitty as it sounds. The problem comes in her having no job, no finances, almost no friends and no family support unit. I'm not a monster. I don't want to make someone virtually homeless, but I don't want to be stuck with someone who has nothing going for them either. I don't know what to do. Edit. Thank you for all the advice in this post. I don't know if this sub allows updates, but I'll talk to her tomorrow about this and start the process of working this out. Relevant comments. OP explains. Yeah, if she was a toxic or just bad partner, I wouldn't have too much trouble ending it but she's fairly nice, just very lazy. I've tried to talk her into trying different hobbies or interests to get her active, but she always turns them down each time. How long? She wasn't as bad when we were still in school, she at least helped cook and had some aspirations to be a nurse. But I guess when she started getting comfortable, her habits built on and on until it got to this point. This wouldn't have been a four-year relationship if this was how it started. She only leaves the apartment when I take her to get food, she either sleeps or is on her phone. Is she miserable with her life? She's not really miserable, she always sends me 30 plus memes at work on IG and is honestly a pretty funny person. She has her mood swings on some days, but that's how she usually is. I've tried talking to her about this more than once, but she either thinks I'm not being serious or tries to change the subject. The one time I was serious, she said would try looking at courses again, but it eventually fell through and I stopped trying. She just doesn't really care. Update one, for starters, I want to thank everyone for all the advice I was given on the last thread as it helped me formulate how I would go about doing this. 
When I made that post, I was having an extremely bad day and didn't expect it to blow up like it did so. I don't think I was able to give her a fair defense. Also, I got dozens of messages ranging from asking me to hand out her contact info so they could take her in as a live-in sex girlfriend, to helpful advice telling me to start hiding anything valuable. When I had said that she had come from poverty, her father is a laborer while her mother also lives a similar lifestyle to how she lives now. Their home is maybe 1,100 square feet and in a terrible place in town, and given her father's past ultimatum. I don't think he will take her back as she hasn't been back home in years. Yes, I have talked to her about this since January maybe three times, either by gently telling her it would be nice if she went out more to find a hobby at the very least to flat out say she was wasting away on her phone and that she needs to get a job or go back to school. Each time she either changes the subject, makes it a joke, or follows through for a couple of days before going back to her usual self. She is a kind partner who asks me about my day, always tries to make me laugh or lighten the mood when I get annoyed, and generally shows a lot of affection, which makes me feel terrible when none of that works anymore and I just see her as another person. Now for the confrontation. Last night when we were both getting ready for bed, I didn't take my clothes off and instead just stood there, telling her we needed to talk. At first she was just smiling and jumping up and down on the bed with her knees thinking I wasn't as serious as I was, but eventually she was able to read the mood. I told her something wasn't feeling right anymore, that I've tried to make this work and be patient with her for the past few years, but I didn't know how much more time I was willing to spend waiting for her to get a job go back to school, or just get a hobby if anything. I told her that it annoyed and graded me that she just didn't seem to care about herself, and that I hated that she had no goals or aspirations. This was probably the first time in a long time she was as attentive as she's ever been during this conversation, and agreed to whatever I was saying, even also giving suggestions on where she can apply, what courses were starting to interest her, and even said I could look over her as she submitted applications online to make sure she wasn't lying. In her head, it seemed like I was still willing to make this work, and a part of me believed this would finally be the moment that she would change. So it made the next part even harder for me and for her. At first I told her I didn't love her the same way, which slowly but eventually led to me saying I didn't feel anything at all about this relationship and was jaded. I was tired and wanted a fresh start with someone who was more goal-oriented and wanted something more out of life. When she realized what I was getting at, she started to cry and asked why I didn't mention this sooner, and I said I've always asked her to cook, to go out with me to try something out, or to just go back to school even when I offered to pay for her classes, anything. She said she understands that part, but was upset why I didn't say it was leading to me losing interest in her, because from her perspective it seemed as if I still loved her all the same. She started apologizing, saying she wasn't in the right mental state and saying nothing was motivating her, and she genuinely had no interest in any hobbies, the only thing she liked was spending time with me which is all she looked forward to on the day when I came home. None of this was really affecting my emotions besides making me feel uncomfortable. So I tried to continue by saying, I think her lifestyle would be better with another person, but she immediately cut me off and became more panicked. She started to apologize again for what she's done and said she would be a better girlfriend, that she would go with me tomorrow to wherever I wanted to go and would look for courses in August that she could start doing, but she did not want to lose me since she had nothing else in life and absolutely hated that I stopped loving her. There were so many tears and snot that I said we would have this conversation again when she calmed down, and we eventually did in an hour or so. She pleaded to give her two months to make a change and give her another chance and promised and promised that she would change. Again, she listed off all the places she would apply to and said she would be a better partner. I never wanted to make her homeless, so this seemed like a good settlement, even though I still had my doubts. I then reaffirmed that I wanted to see other people, but she seemed much more adamant on this issue than the aspirations issue that she would be able to fix this. She said just give her a month to try and make the relationship work, and asked me again and again on what she could do to make her love her again, and that she didn't want me to hate her. She said that this was the worst part of it all, and the only person that she had just done. It seemed as if she was about to break down again, so I said, okay, we'll see how this relationship is in a run. In my mind, if I'm allowing her two months to get back on her feet, then by a month she would already be ready to move on. I also didn't want her to suffer a complete mental breakdown while I was still living with her, so giving her a month to let her fix the relationship would give her enough time to accept things. I slept on the couch last night and will probably continue doing so for a while. She came out at about 3 a.m. wanting to talk some more, but I said I was exhausted and we would do it tomorrow. She then slept on the floor beside me for the rest of the night apologizing again when I told her to stop. She silently said okay and sobbed for a bit under her blanket, but that's everything that's happened so far. This was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, but I regret nothing and feel much better letting everything out. I don't know how this situation will be in two months, but I was firm that it was the deadline. This post will probably get buried, so I probably won't do another update since I don't think anyone will care about this in a week or a month, but I will definitely private message those of you who have been helping me through this or those who just want to be updated. But yeah, thanks. Hello, I have a partner who wants to start taking an interest in baking. She's a bit self-conscious and doesn't like asking or looking for outside help. 
and I'm kind of clueless in the subject, but I want to be able to find a resource to give some help for her. Are there any YouTube playlists or something similar you would all recommend to get started for someone who has little experience cooking as well? Update 3. This is a long post, and no, I'm not going to give a tolger. Hey all, it's been about a week since my last post, and I thought I'd give an update. A lot has happened, including the explosion of my first update thread. I have over 50 plus DMs asking me for an update so instead of copy and pasting replies I'll do another one. I find it easier to write than to speak in many situations so this has been a great way to help my decisions and clear my head. Writing everything down has helped tremendously and I will continue to do so until this is all over and I will nuke everything afterwards. After the night confrontation we didn't really speak all too much at home with it being dry and awkward for a day or two but I had been told I'm a workaholic by nature so it was easy for me to stay at the hospital as a distraction but in that time she did start to cook again. We weren't in the mood to go out to eat together. Eventually though, I sat down with her after she asked for a more thorough conversation on why I felt our relationship was failing. She promised not to cry or get upset but wanted me to be 100% upfront so she had a better way of understanding, stating she wanted to try everything to fix this. I was really apprehensive about this and I can't really explain why, but given being together for four years I wanted to at least make an effort myself out of respect, even though a large part of me was angry for even doing so as I feel I've never had the same from her. There have been many different camps in my last update, the main ones being kick her out immediately and leave her before it gets worse. Try to find a way to fix our relationship or end the relationship are together but continue living with someone who would probably become absolutely neurotic. If I was going to let her stay for two months I would absolutely not be dealing with that. I took consideration in all these main advice discussions and read through almost every reply. Even the most assumptive, bizarre, and downright unhinged Redditor takes. More importantly, I took heavy influence from those who have shared with me their past stories which either led to them being stuck in loveless relationships for years or eventually being able to overcome their problems and have an even stronger connection. Thank you again for your private messages I read through a lot of your lives. Now for our conversation, she said she saw something on TikTok where couples put a phone on a table with a timer and wanted to do something similar for each person to air what made them upset. I said that was dumb. If we were going to talk about our problems, it would be better if there was no time limit. She eventually agreed and said I could go first, asking me first when was the time that I completely lost my love for her. As I said before, it was never one action, but a grating feeling that got worse and worse until it got to this point, and I told her that. So she then asked when was the time I felt the most angry. I said it would take some time to think for me, and she said that was fine. After a few minutes, something came to mind. I couldn't formulate the right words at first, but it eventually just started to come out. I told her the worst time was when I was first starting at my hospital. To keep it short, the tempo was brutal. It was constant work with little to no downtime as I was constantly learning new things that school would had never taught me. While being expected to be able to handle it as a professional, it was without a doubt the most stressed I've ever been and I feel like other RNs can relate here. That year hardened the way I think now. That hard work does pay off if you have the drive and the passion. I told her I think that was when I started losing feelings the fastest, seeing her at home doing absolutely nothing. Coming home to no food made, to her not working a job, to her not learning anything, completely stuck to the internet with nothing to show for it. I said it made me even more upset when I had given suggestions for jobs with pretty easy schedules, or to find a new interest in school that would pan out better than last time only to be rejected at every attempt. I told her flat out that it disgusted me. She asked me why I didn't make this a bigger issue at the time that I should have communicated this to her, but I said there's some things that shouldn't have to be said. I shouldn't have to remind her to wash her ass, eat, do something other than mindlessly scrolling on her phone for hours at a day, every day. I also told her that after coming home from the hospital during more stressful days, the last thing I wanted was to spend my time begging my girlfriend to do something productive. So I held my tongue and settled as she was still nice and caring. I had no other reasons to end it, and so the resentment grew worse from then on. It was around here that I became more mean to my regret now, but I will still input it as I have everything else. I told her that when she dropped nursing I was upset since I felt that she was more than capable of doing what I had done but after spending more time in the relationship and spending more time getting to know her. I knew that with the type of person she was there was no way she could have ever finished, which is why I suggested easier and more laid-back jobs, less demanding majors for school. Shit, even if she just cooked or found an interesting hobby at that point, I would have appreciated it. Still, she chose to do nothing for years. It's just the type of person she was and why I felt done for her romantically over time. She asked me if I hated her, and I said I didn't know. I told her she was very loving and kind, but... I hated how she handled her life to this point, that I felt no ill will towards her after airing everything out, but I also felt nothing else, I just felt done and ready to move on. Throughout this conversation we kept eye contact, and there were times it seemed like she would break, but like she said she remained as calm as she could while I said what I had to say. I told her I was done and she could say her piece now but she asked if we could continue the conversation later and locked herself in our room for the rest of the day. The next day we sat down again and finished the conversation. She told me that she thinks she's depressed, saying that she didn't feel sad before that night just had no motivation to do anything. 
I had a couple of messages telling me to ask her to get tested for ADHD. But when I started bringing it up, she was very adamant that is not something she felt comfortable with. I knew she didn't like needles or going to the hospital in general, but her flat out refusing to get tested for disorders when I told her it was not at all like a regular hospital visit surprised me. She asked me if she was able to change her behavior, would I give her another chance? I said I didn't know as I felt nothing right now and didn't know if her doing it would bring any feeling back, especially since it took my breaking point to do so. She asked if there was any compromise, and I told her again, if in a month I felt like there was enough reason to stay together, I would, but that there was no guarantee that my feelings would return, but I would match any effort she also put out. She was frustrated by my answer, but I said that's how it would be. She gave me a piece of paper to look at that she was working on last night that had a list of hobbies and interests she wanted to look into, the two major ones being photography and cooking again. She told me that she was looking into these while also showing me her phone giving proof that she was putting in applications on Indeed and Glassdoor for some entry-level positions that she might get hired in. I told her if she was able to show enough passion or interest in these hobbies that she showed, I would not care about her working, just anything to improve herself. But if she didn't do anything at all, then it would be best to look for a new job to help her if she moves out. I've also been asked in private messages if I have any personal friends to talk to. There's two female co-workers I confide some information in given how many hours we work together at our hospital, and who I completely trust as in my opinion they are extremely grounded. They both said I would eventually get love bombed and this would all go back to how it once was and that I needed to stand firm with moving on. They have very helpful friends who have even offered to let me stay over for a few nights giving the reason that I would fall for. Her manipulation if continued being anywhere near her in their own words. But it didn't feel right since I'm still technically in a relationship, but I said I would consider it if the situation worsened. But again, I find them grounded, so I always try to take their advice to heart. Despite numerous messages from you all privately or openly telling me that this will be a mistake, I want to make the attempt to give this one last try, though I feel heavily closed and guarded and still feel indifferent with our current situation. But a lot of you have told me this can eventually change with enough work from both parties. I have also taken the advice of those saying to cut off sex, which was my intention from the start anyway, by continuing to sleep in the living room. But each day she has been sleeping on the floor right below me, even when I tell her I'd rather be alone with my thoughts, telling me this is something she would not accept. But that's everything so far. Next update will probably be at the month mark as there's nothing else I feel like I need to say for now. Just waiting to see if things can get better now that we're working on this somewhat. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real life stories happening around you.